Okay, here we go. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode three of Master's Class. I am TBK Zord here with Grandmaster Juki, or he will be Grandmaster again this season. <laughs> you just, I'll, you just hit it. master. You just hit master. So <laughs> yeah, you're, did, you're well did. on your way, dude. You're well on yeah, your way. taking my taking my time. Yeah, I mean, there's there's nothing wrong with that, right? Yeah. Just easing into. I mean, it's only been what like two and a half weeks since the season started. So mm-hmm. it's not it's not been a super long time or anything. Yeah. Um, so guys, tonight uh, we are going to be going over Cursed Hollow and Haunted Mines map strategies. We will then be looking at one of my Hero League replays. And just as an FYI for all the replays, most of the replays you watch on here will be losses. I'm not this bad constantly. Uh, <laughs> but you you learn a lot, tend to learn a lot more from your losses than if you you know, just watch your stomps. So we're going to usually be going over games uh, that were losses or games that were very even. Uh, and then we'll round things off with an unranked draft uh, to talk some draft strategy. So without further ado, uh, let's talk about Curse Hollow. All right. Juki, why don't you run us through kind of an overview of uh, this, one of the original maps in the game. Okay, so uh, Curse Hollow, yeah. So um, the main objective for this map is to uh, capture the tributes. Like you need to capture three tributes to trigger the curse, which um, which disables the enemy's t- uh, fort, uh, lowers all the minions to uh, one HP to pretty much where you can just instant kill them with one uh, auto attack. And uh, yeah. Again, that's the main objectives. Um, there's obviously bosses on this map, um, some uh, hard camps and uh, siege camps, and uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's a pretty straightforward map. Do you, just just as a little bit of nostalgia, do you remember back at the time when the curse not only lowered minions' health to one, but also halved the health of the forest and keeps? Wait, I'm sorry, you cut off a little bit. What oh, sorry. Do you remember back at the time when uh, originally the curse lowered the health of the forts and keeps by half, too? No, I yes. I don't think so I was around was, that time. Yeah, back in Tech Alpha, the curse was actually way stronger, and oh, that damn. led to ridiculous amounts of snowballing, so that's when they actually changed it to just disable them and lower the minion health instead of actually having the fort. Oh god, that's, that sounds Doesn't that brutal. sound like brutal? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That sounds brutal. So rough. Right. Um, so uh, just let's talk general strategy. Um, as far as curse spawns, there's or tribute spawns, there's three on top, three on bottom. Uh, you can kind of predict this a yes. little bit. Um, um, I can explain the that. quadrants. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, there's three tributes from top to bottom, and the way you can tell by where they're gonna spawn next is so if two are already spawned at the bottom, the next one is gonna be on the top. Um, sometimes it can be random. Um, there are some games where I did see like one one spawn at the top, and then after that one in the bottom. But the usual case would be like it's always gonna be like two on one side, and then the the last tribute on the other side. Mm-hmm. And um, so if you if you quickly look at the closest tribute to the middle one, which F one, um, but the bottom one, it, so if that is the last tribute um, that spawns in the bottom side, the next one is probably gonna be on the top on the top side on the right side. So it's legitimately like a diagonal mm-hmm. if you look at it that way. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty much how you can tell by when um, when like the tribute when. Uh, when a tribute is transitioning to uh, one of the sides, uh, one one of the side um, after you capture the second one. Yep. And um, yeah, the, so the strategy is pretty much like the laning phase is like one one three. So you have one bo- uh, one top, one mid, and one and uh, three bottom. Um, and uh, tribute spawn tributes uh, indicator gives that timing uh, spawns. Or tells you at like two minutes in. It's not. It's not always two minutes. So it's like sometimes like two minutes and ten seconds, two minutes and fifteen. So like it's gonna be around there. So once you hit that two minute mark, be ready to uh, respond and rotate to wherever that first tribute spawns. And uh, yeah, uh, ca- camp. The camp spawned. Um, I. 
the siege the siege camp spawns at two minutes, and I think the hard camp spawns at four minutes into the game. And uh, yeah, yeah, and it's all it's always good if uh, if you can grab one of those siege champs, siege champs, they're champs, siege camps, <laughs> they, <laughs> they are they're champs, guys. Uh, if you can grab one of those siege camps before a tribute spawns. Uh, because then, especially on long drawn out tribute fights, even just giant camps can get some really good pushing work done while the enemy team is distracted. Yeah. So um, usually, um, what people do is um, when it when you hit that when you're close to the two minute mark, so like let's say a minute and fifty seconds, you you just want to rotate, have like your one of your three man uh, or two of your three in the uh, three man um, position laning phase um mm -hmm. to two of them go to the siege camp if you're on the bottom side so uh, and go do that siege camp um and usually um since the enemy's team like let's say okay sorry um let me rephrase it again so the three so like let's say the three man uh, is in the bottom lane so and you're on and you're playing on the right side so you want to send two people to your siege camp when two when the two minute spawn uh mm -hmm. hits but the problem for um that's good for you, but the problem for the enemy team is that since their three man is in the bottom lane, they're forced to eat, and uh, the enemy team on the left side is forced to either um, have their mid laner go do the siege camp, and then after that, one of the three mans have to rotate to middle to keep that soak going, or the top lane, vice versa. Mm -hmm. And uh, for that, uh, it would be, I mean, like you, the right side team would have uh, better. Uh, better advantage just because of the positioning but also note that um if the tr first tribute spawns at the bottom so bottom and then your your camp is pushing bottom uh it that siege camp will won't get any value just because uh the tribute's right there so everyone's gonna be there and you and the so siege camp yeah, yeah they'll yeah. just clean up on on the spot there so, so yeah so here's a question for you so you you talked about the right side having the advantage in that, that three-man bottom rotation. If you're on the left side, does it behoove you to have the th your three-man on top because of the Siege Giants and then, um, just, and then have a strong solo bottom? Okay, so the reason, the, the reason why it's always a three-man bottom is because if you look at the difference, um, if you look at the distance between the top um, lane and the bottom lane, so the bottom lane is more... Um, Closed compared to the top, uh, the top being more wide open. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so that's why it's safer just just to have a three man bottom, so that that way um, you don't get gank or so on by the enemy team, whatever. But like with the top, the top lane being so wide, um, mm. a wide lane is like you can you have like enough space to really just ki uh, gank and kill someone. So that's I why gotcha. yeah. Yeah, and that's and that's a little detail you don't think about that often, but it is true if you kind of look, the bottom lane is slightly more enclosed mm -hmm. than the top lane yeah, is. So, yeah. Um, okay. Well, let's let's talk about bosses then on this map because this map bosses are a huge deal, and there's two yes. of them, and bottom left, top right. So ideal ideal boss time, and hint, it's not during a curse. Um, so you you mostly want to um, really it really depends on like how the situation is going. So sure. one of the situations that I can uh, quickly bring up is that like if you guys win a team fight and it's like uh, let's say it's let's say it's 15 minutes in and the the first curse wave is already over. Um, uh, you can after the first curse wave, um, you can get the boss and use that as to pressure the enemy team, and then after that, go gain your map control somewhere else. That is one. That is one way to know when to capture a uh, boss. The other one is if you win a team fight, and uh, you guys can immediately just go grab that, or you can uh, deny their boss by um, just going to their boss and getting their uh, boss camp. Mm -hmm. um, the third one is uh, actually I think that's really it. They're just the two situations there, sure. or the yeah. two scenarios. <clears throat> and I mean that's that's pretty big, right? Because yeah. the, the, especially the later the game goes, the stronger the boss gets. So let's say you grab yeah. your safe boss, then now you can start heading up towards the enemy's boss, and the enemy now has to make the decision: Do we let the boss push, push. bottom? Un, you know. 
unstopped or do we go and we fight over our boss and you can even bait them towards that not necessarily even starting the boss you could even push mid you could push top depending on what's going on and you'll all you'll just you can kind of head that way keep an eye on your vision if one or two of them stay around for the boss on the bottom or on the top depending which side you're on then you can make that decision okay we can now take a 5v3 up on their boss or bait that or take the boss or whatever yeah it really it really depends on the draft like again like the draft is super important like in heroes of the storm in general so like if you're able to get one global for this map it would be perfect because then you mm -hmm. could just have that one person focus on that boss while the other four uh kind of just try to push them away from your from taking away your boss so that that way you don't have two bosses uh going towards uh your base yeah um or the other the other one is um you uh you can let it push um and you know let them take the uh keep but if you're able to win a team fight and get the boss you guys can probably end the game there but again you have to keep in mind that it really depends on the death timer if the death timer is really long then you guys can take that risk but um usually it doesn't end well so it's best to really just to have one or two person uh just clear that uh the boss that's coming towards your base and just clear that and then after that clear the other one um another one is also you can just have five man clear the boss and five and then after let them cap the boss and you guys can clear that boss as well it really depends on like how strong your draft is so if you have a really strong five man to where like you can kill the boss really fast regards regardless of its time um, then that's also a uh, a decent um, decision to do. Mm -hmm, for sure. And one other handy little trick too, uh, especially on that uh, either the bottom side for the the right team or the top side for the blue team, is you can actually cap those giants in such a timing way that the giants will actually help you kill the boss. Oh yeah, yeah. As well. Yes, um, that's so be right be thinking of that, especially. I mean, if the other team is pushing with the boss, you probably don't want to step outside and <laughs> try to uh -huh. do that at the same time. But yeah. if they're off somewhere else, you can see them on the map because again, watching your map is super strong. If you cap mm -hmm. those giants as the boss is kind of coming around that bend, uh, so that they kind of walk out as he gets close to the gate, they'll just start attacking him, and you'll get that boss down that much faster with. With your giant you, you can tell by when a team is doing uh, a boss is again with the draft is like if they have a gray main or a vala or maybe a Li Ming, um you can and like they're not showing on the map and like so give it like let's say like about 10 to 20 seconds if they're not showing on the map then that means they're doing the boss or is uh, if your team is behind and their team uh, their team their team is ahead and like they have nothing to do besides boss then that's probably the call yeah, that's that, like, they're doing they boss yeah, yeah that's it's probably just where they are deductive so, like, reasoning right yeah if the so, camps like, are watching, gone yeah yeah, so like watching where your where your enemy team is at in the mini map is super important because that just indicates like what what they are doing and you can kind of tell by like when they're doing their hard camp and when they're doing this by siege camp uh their siege camp depending on uh what's already been taken on their side and what's already been it's what's already been pushed mm -hmm. um to your base to and kind of just again shows where they are what are they doing at that specific moment sure. um also i want to note that taking the vision is probably extremely important um I, I just found out or I just learned recently um, I didn't really give too much of I didn't really care too much of the vision like mm -hmm. you can really again look at the mini map but like again just having that vision control is incredibly powerful because it just gives you map control simply just by taking the vision because now it's like you're able to see where the enemy team is at and it's just like if someone caps that vision then that just shows where uh, yeah you know exactly uh, where they you, are yeah you just know where they are by like um, just given by the the game the game time and like um, again by what what's already been done like if you see one per like let's say bot lane um, let's say you're able to cap um, you guys push the bottom fort um, like you're going from left to so like you're the left side mm -hmm. you already destroyed the bottom fort and like you want to take that um, take that vision so that kind of just shows and like 
again, you guys took the bottom four. So that kind of just shows that, like, okay, there's five man bottom. So there's like five to four man bottom there, and so that kind of just tells the right the right side um, um, team to like, oh, you guys can push top, like a four man push top mm -hmm. or just uh, get steal their vision and take their siege camp, and then now you have like a full. You so you like you now have a full top side um, control, and they have the full bottom side control yeah it's just it's just one of those knowledge is power things the more yeah. the more you can know about your opponent the better um, yes. there's two more points I wanted to hit on first you you talked about this a little bit but globals are so insanely insanely high priority on this map this is one of the biggest maps in the game this is a huge map mm -hmm. and yeah. so given being able to have that Falstad, that Dahaka um, probably slightly more situationally bright wing uh, mm -hmm. can give you a huge advantage as far as being able to stay in lane and split soak some during mm -hmm. tribute fights or while your team pokes for your tribute fight. Um, just in general, like while you're defending, let's say defending a boss, uh, mm -hmm. you can still soak somewhere else and then be over at your team if they need you, that sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, also, uh, I also want to that um I want to add on to that as the the hero pool for that is as well as a uh, apather can also be a very good picker um due to one you have a global soak so like you can soak the middle lane with your body and then you can soak the top lane with your hat mm -hmm. and then uh also you can plant mines within the for uh within the uh, forts near the tr the forest near the tribute so that that way it slows their rotations as well so like apather is incredibly powerful to if you can pick it up but it also has to come down to how how well your foreman is if your foreman is incredibly strong then you can pick up that abathur if mm -hmm. you like but um yeah again it's mostly you want to either first pick uh falstad if you can or first pick the haka whichever one uh rag is also really um mm -hmm. even though okay so the thing with the recent patch is that like rag did get nerfed so his damage isn't incredibly high compared to his uh the previous patch so um rag is now being picked um not prioritized anymore but he i think he would still be okay in this map just because like he can go with molten core and just stall um stall the tributes uh stall capture. bosses yes so stall not not stall bosses but mainly just the tribute um and also yeah okay yeah sorry uh stall uh stall the bosses too when you molten core mm -hmm. and then after that you just do damage to the boss when it's pushing towards you but um yeah again um the only problem is that like when you have a global on this on this map it kind of puts you in a uh, a little bit of a uh, risky crappy situation <laughs> i try to find like a really good word for i think crappy would maybe be the best um because uh if you're if the enemy team drafts a really good five man then it and and you really and like you say you have one global but you have like a, a four now it kind of puts you in a weird situation into a 4v5 so like yeah you're gonna be globaling but if their five man is way stronger to where like they can just run down your four man in an instant it just kind of um it just kind of puts your your team at a little bit of a disadvantage. A disadvantage. Mm -hmm. So it's best to really decide um, what you want to do when the tribute spawns immediately. So once once the tribute spawn, you have to uh, ask your team like, hey, are you guys in position to get this tribute? If not, then it's best to just leave it, uh, leave and just go soak all the three lanes while the enemy team is all the enemy um, the enemy team is mm -hmm. like a, doing like a five man rotation. So yep. that's a little bit of a like a strategy, a tip. Uh, that you guys can do, um, yeah, and you also, don't have to um, win every tribute. Like, yeah, you, you need do three not have of to them. Win every tribute. Yeah, um, and also note that um, again, if you're, f if uh, let's say you have a global and like you have a Zarya or something to where like that one hero can infinitely st uh, stall the tribute, that would be great because then now it's like yes, they have a really good five man, but you because you have that one stall hero, like you can just stall that tribute as as long as possible while that one global is just soaking for you guys mm -hmm. and yeah so it's best really to um play um play to uh out out level or just have like um just try to get to 10 first before the enemy team so that, that way um 
once that one tribute spawn where like you're 10 and they're eight like they can't really do anything so that's when you and then at that moment when you guys cap that tribute when it's 10 to 8 uh you guys that's when you guys hard pressure the map and then just take everything that you can because again they're they're level 8 and you're level 10 so like you have the ultis and they don't mm -hmm. so yeah that's another good um tip that you guys yeah yeah um so finally let's talk about the biggest thing on this map let's talk about the curse so your mm -hmm. team just got the curse you got all five yeah. man how do you maximize your curse potential? Okay, so um, each cur uh, the curse is like what a minute, a minute and twenty <coughs> each. Sorry, excuse, excuse me. Um, so yeah, the first. Um, so yeah, each curse is like a minute to a minute and twenty, I think, or a minute and ten. Uh, can't be too exact, but it's somewhere within the a minute and something. Yeah. So the the first the first curse wave, what you want to do is really just have just soak all the three lanes um, so that that way you maximize the XP experience and uh, now it's like you can legitimately just eliminate all of the fort uh, the forts if mm -hmm. possible um, and then after that um, what I usually do is that like after at, when the when the curse is almost done let's say like you have like 10 seconds le like you have 20 to 10 seconds left you want to just tell your teammates hey uh, let's just uh, let's position for our boss and cap that so that that way once the curse is done you guys you guys capture that boss now it's like now you have that top lane pressure and then after that you guys can go bot um, the bottom uh, bottom boss and just go cap that as well so then that's that's how you capture two boss with uh, at the same time yeah. and probably the safest way to do it um because the enemy then, team uh, really can't Unless, unless you got basically an all defensive curse and you're super far behind, anyways, the mm -hmm. enemy will most likely <clears throat> not be able to challenge a boss taking on your front. But at yes. the same time, you want to make sure that you get a good amount of uh, worth out of the out of the curse, which it, it is yeah. a minute long. Um, get a good amount of worth out of the curse before you start posturing and taking that boss like you said in the last 10 15 seconds or so uh just to guarantee yourself's value because if you waste a bunch of time on the boss and then push back that gives them a lot of time <clears throat> to clear their lanes back mm -hmm. because the lanes can be cleared and you can defend a curse fairly well is if no one else is pressuring anything so yeah. adding that pressure first pushing those lanes in then getting the boss while everyone else has to clean their lanes up, will give you a much better, <clears throat> much better strategy than grabbing the boss first and having everything pushed up already. Yeah. So um, also, I want to add into this. Um, it's still like, let's say, it's the scenario is still like the first curse wave, and so once that's done, um, so let's say like the boss was captured like a seven. It's like a seven minute boss. So. Um, if you're the team that's defending, if you're the team that's uh, in the defensive side, uh, what you want to do is you have two options. You can leave that boss and let it push um, to um, to to your base. But since it's a seven minute boss, it's a really weak boss, so it's really not going to get much of a value. Like you can um, you can kind of get a head start and just deal a little bit of damage to it maybe like one-fourth of it and then after that um, if you know that the enemy team is at your boss right now you can kind of just go challenge that and you just leave that boss that's pushing that's pushing towards mm -hmm. you to uh, and just let the turrets um, kill kill it because that again the early boss isn't really gonna do much it's really meant to just have pressure have map pressure mm -hmm. um, so yeah that's uh, that's probably that's one way. I mean, that's like maybe like uh one way. The other way is just like you completely just leave it. Maybe it'll take a uh, maybe take a keep, and then you challenge them and um, try to maybe win. Uh, if you can win a team fight there, then that can just uh um put maybe more value to where like you get a boss and you and you win a team fight, so you're able to maybe get more value out of that one boss that's being pushed to your um, sure but you have to but, yeah. in those situations you have to be sure that you can win the five man yeah because so, like you said earlier if you get wiped there now you have two bosses and a full mm -hmm. team pushing against you instead of just defending against one then defending against the second one 
Yeah. So yeah, again, that's like really the two situations. But the best one is probably just you know be safe since again it's a seven minute boss. So just like clear that one, and then after that, just clear the other one. Mm -hmm. Or you can just have one person clear it, and if you think you guys can challenge it, then like you guys can go challenge that four v five boss. But just remember that like try to you when you're in that position for a four v five, try to position to where like the boss is helping you instead of the boss. Um, being against you so like make sure that you use its cc let's aoe cc and it's um spot uh cc those roots yeah fighting under yeah. it yeah is, try is yeah strong. try try not to try to fight beside it try to like have the boss aggro towards them and not to you yeah, that's that's the way to fight um uh um around the boss yeah, because you want to catch them in as many of the roots and as many yeah. of the stuns as you can. Yeah, if you can. But usually, in most cases, is uh, once um, once they see you guys, once they see you guys coming towards them, they, they'll usually just back off because uh, the roots and the AOE stun on the boss is just way significantly too strong, and it can be like a break, uh, a win, a win, mm -hmm. a, a, yeah, a break and win. Yeah, and I mean that's that's a good general tip right there too. Fighting a boss unless unless you see the enemy team in multiple spots on the mini map, fighting a boss from in front of your walls is a terrible terrible idea. Mm -hmm. It's always much better to fight from behind the walls than it is to go out there and engage because then you have to be watching out for the route. You have to be watching out for the AOE stun, and that can cause a lot of block between and separation between teammates and that's something I see far too often is people start engaging stuff from outside the safety of walls and then they just get picked off or separated unnecessarily mm -hmm. um, I think that's it yeah uh, it was good yeah. alright well let's uh, move on to our second map of the night which is Haunted Mines oh god yeah <laughs> Our brand new Haunted Mines. It's everyone's favorite map. Oh, God. This is, this is a map uh, that the is not very popular in the pro community. So why don't, why don't, you, why don't you tell us, tell us why, why you don't like this map? So um, this map can be kind of like... Um, how should I explain? Very, very snowbally, but I mean, it's not very, it's not completely snowball to the point where, like, in the previous map, is like if you capture, um, you know, your your the golems um, spawn wherever they they were killed. So that changed. That was a pretty good change. So it's a little bit more balanced, but at the same time, again, it's still super snowbally because you can. Um, uh, the the seed the pumpkins can really the help. Sapper yeah, the sapper camps are camp. OP. On yeah, this the map. sapper camps are really OP, and I would probably recommend to prioritize them. So it's just like, um, so let's say you win the. I mean, you have a bigger golems. You can um rotate to. So let's say okay, um, let let's put it this way. Let's create this scenario. Okay. Quick. So you're so you're playing on the right side. And the enemy team is on the left side, obviously. And the fir and your golem spawned in the bottom side. And yeah, again, you guys have the bigger goal. So what you guys can do is uh, um, during the phase where it's spawning, you guys have like a small open to go capture that top, um, that top pumpkins. And then after that, um, just capture it and then let it push to the enemy team. And then after that, you guys can go capture your pumpkins as well afterwards. And then. Um, uh, put and then you guys can do like a four one to where like one person um, defend against the golem and then the four push super hard with the bigger golem and the pumpkins. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, again, pumpkins are extremely extremely OP in this map. Um, I would even say it's probably prioritized a lot more than the siege camp. The siege camps are really used to. Um, uh, really, just defend against the golems, or if um, if there's really nothing, and you guys you guys can just cap that golem too, and just I mean that siege camp and just help you push as well. But again, most cases would be to um, you just cap that siege camp yeah. when you especially during defend. lane phase. Whenever yeah. whenever you've got 
whenever you're just laning, if you can grab both those sapper camps every time they're up, that that will help when you get to the game. Like yeah. they they are so like you said, they're so incredibly strong on this map, and they're undervalued by a lot of people who don't realize the pushing potential because there's only two lanes. Like mm -hmm. there's not there's not that much to push. So having yeah. minions that can basically almost blow up the entire front wall that you push down. It's just so much it's a, such an easy way to get so much XP very quickly on a ramp mm -hmm. and that's how and, you start that snowball. Yeah. And uh that's honestly not that um too annoying, but the most annoying one is where like you can camp the entrance and then after that just blow someone up once they enter and that's incredibly <laughs> annoying in a way because it's just like oh uh, you, uh, uh the yep. golem spawn the the skull spawn so let's go in boom you're instant dead because there's a five of them just waiting for you to enter at that specific entrance um and the way uh the way to do that oh god i can't believe i'm explaining it um the way to do that is um so you can cap the the visions. Um, if again, if you're playing on the right side, uh, you can cap their vision, the one on the left, and then after that, that kind of just indicates that like um, that they're right there. And obviously, they're gonna cap it back, but it ki it kind of shows that like now they have two options, which usually two options to where like oh they're gonna go to the bottom entrance or they're gonna go to the left entrance. And in most cases, they will go to the left entrance. So it's just like you can just tell your teammates that like hey. Uh, or um, have one person go collect the skulls while the other four just wait at that entrance and then just um, just camp that entrance and then after that just kill whoever teleports in and yeah. that's why this map is can be extremely snowbally because if you're if you're positioned correctly if you're postured correctly you can kind of win this game in a couple of minutes uh, I would say yeah, yeah it's yeah. it's it, it's it's all about posturing up in this and honestly and so again we, we talked about the merc camps in a lot of ways capturing those merc camps especially early game may even be more important than getting a very strong golem especially uh -huh. if you're yes. behind getting the merc camps it, it, say you're a level or two down or a talent tier down you know you can't really engage them in the mines the enemy team will probably mostly be in the mines grabbing the merc camps while they're down there can especially for the first golem spawn can be just as good as getting a stronger goal mm -hmm. so yeah uh, I want to also um, yeah just like you mentioned uh, I'm gonna add it on that um, you don't really need to get a hundred golems a uh, hundred skulls so once you reach above 50 um, maybe above 55 so like around so like let's say you capture about 65 or so that is enough for you to have the um, the big uh, golem so you don't really need to capture any more points because it doesn't I don't I'm not too sure I think it scales uh, to 70 or it did last I um, yeah I'm just gonna I'll say that I'm not I'm not too sure just because uh, I didn't really do much of a study on this map just because uh, it's not in the HCC pool thank God so uh, yeah and uh, I didn't really I didn't really play around um, the time I didn't I mean I did a little bit but like not to where like I was cri critical on everything but like yeah again um, uh, back to my point is that uh, once you capture like uh, 65 or so um, you can just uh, leave the the um, the gold mines and after that you can start pressuring the lane to uh, wherever your golem spawns so like if you're in the top if you're in the top if your golem is in the top and you have at least 65 or so you can just start pushing that lane so that, that way you get the most value push um yeah okay uh, so soft soft camp uh, soft cap I think is 60 okay we'll, we'll double check on that um but I believe I believe that's 60 to 70 is the soft cap. And okay. so anything after that is basically just denying. Yeah. So, yeah, again, it's mostly, um, again, pretty much the main thing that I want everyone to that I want everyone to understand is that you don't need to capture a hundred. That's all. That's all you need to know. If you capture mm -hmm. about like sixty-five or seventy, like you mentioned, then uh, that's that's good enough, and you guys can start pressuring uh, where uh, whatever lanes that um, your your golem is at. Yep. And I mean that's 
there's there's not a whole lot more to this map. Honestly, mm -hmm. it's it's, it's yeah. a fairly pretty much it's a fairly simplistic map, for the most part. Um, remember though, once the mines open, you can go in them at any time. So you can actually use the mines, especially now that there's four entrances. You can use the not mines to strategically gank and strategically move around in relative safely safety during non golem phases even. Um, oh, yeah. it's, it's something I don't see people do yeah. very often, but in a coordinated environment, this can actually like especially if you've capped the enemy's vision and you can pop in at the enemy side entrance, this can be a huge, huge ganking potential uh, for yes. your team. So just just keep that in mind too. Yeah. And uh, the gold mines, um, when you can enter them, is like what two minutes, uh, two minutes and maybe fifteen seconds or so, somewhere around, somewhere around that. So like yeah, it's usually it's right. yeah it's usually around like two minutes. So just you know, um, honestly, uh, also uh, note that like you don't really have to go in immediately once the gold mine, um, the gold mine, uh, when you're able to enter the gold mines, just uh, make sure that you hit level four, so you have. So you have that extra talent, and then after that, you can go in and do whatever you need to do. Or you, um, another strategy that you can do is like you have one person soaking, and you have a four man on the in the gold mine and just uh, killing the skulls and so on. So that way, you're uh, maximizing the XP experience, uh, gaining experience, and you're also doing the skulls. And again, uh, note that you just need to capture. You just need to have like 65 to 70 skulls. Yeah. And remember, you'll always get you'll get a 30 second warning before yep. the mines open. So this gives you plenty of time to posture up and decide which entrance you're going to go in, especially the first one, because you know that right at the beginning you're going to be safe from getting ganked like you're talking about, just straight ganked from the mines since they haven't been open yet. But you have to keep that in your mind as potential for any subsequent mine phases. All right, I think uh, I think I, it's it's a much much more straightforward map than Curse Hollow, for sure. So uh, lots of lots of different things you can do, but remember, uh, sixty to seventy for the golem is what you want to shoot shoot for to try and get any more. Kind of will just deny skulls to your enemy team and merc camps, especially especially sappers are extremely high priority and extremely powerful on this map. Yes. Okay, so now that we've got our maps done, we are going to jump into a replay analysis, and this is a Towers of Doom replay from some of my Hero League this week. So this should be a, uh, a fun one. I was playing the best hero in the world, ETC. I went from uh, I went from like DPS to tank to now DPS and support after yesterday. <laughs> Got the support love. Yeah, I can't I can't get over the fact that I made those plays. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, okay, maybe maybe I am support god. <laughs> maybe. All right, let's make you host here, and then start her up when ready. Alright. Alright. Okay. So, uh, this is kind of how the, the drafting strategy, or the draft went for this one went. Uh, our, our team banned Vala, and then Mouth, and the enemy team banned Rag, and then Karazim. I was second pick, so I ended up going with uh, grabbing ETC early before the enemy team had a chance to ban him out. Enemy team was first pick. <coughs> um, I also want to note that um, picking talents is extremely important as well. Um, correlating, uh, coordinating, correlating to whatever the team uh, team that you're facing, the team comp that you're facing mm -hmm. against. So, um, for example, um, let's say instead of a Rainer pick, you have that Gray main. Uh, if your gray man went curse bullet, uh, it really puts stitches in a and stitches or artist in a uh, very uh, 
risky situation, I would say, just because you have that curse um, curse bullet value. But then again, it's like note that um, uh, Gray Main into Arthas isn't the best. Um, <laughs> isn't the best pick no, because no. Uh, yeah. Because he, so, he kind of uh, yeah. rips yeah. rips up melee. So yes. um, since we got a Sylvanas pick on this map, and yes, my ETC is fairly sexy. Um, the team wanted to go ahead and do a tower cheese on top to start with mm -hmm. because of the Sylvanas. So um, I would say so. Um, again, um, it's good to know um what the team com and its strength. It's good to know what the uh, the enemy's team com strength is. So it's really kind of I would say it's revolving around the stitches in a way. Just because if you get the, if you get hooked, you're just gonna get walled by the uh, by Nazebo mm -hmm. like zombie walled, and then after that you're pretty much are dead because then you have the Arthas root follow up or so, or it's pretty much where like Arthas roots first and then stitches hook and then zombie wall. So like they fairly have a decent way to kind of get a lockdown comp. Um, yeah, they got a lockdown comp, and uh, I'm really not too fond with the uh, comps that you have, just because um, a Sonya is good hero, but like you guys don't really have that healer sustain, so mm -hmm. it kind of puts you in a uh, shitty situation. Oh, um, just wait, Juki. It, just wait. Yeah. Keep uh, your eye on yeah, the Sonya people. All right, let's uh, let's Four, see. Three. Um, okay, another thing is never take that talent. I don't know why people are taking that talent. It's you really use your E to get away. You're never gonna use your E to disable, um, to disable a turret or to disable anything. The only time are you talking? Uh, the about, okay, you're talking about Sylvanas, right? Yeah, Sylvanas. Yeah. Oh, good lord! I didn't even see she took that. Yeah. So the only the end like <laughs> given on a rare occasion, uh, giving on the rare occasion is like okay. If you want to use your E to like um disable something, it would probably have to be a scenario where like you're chasing them. So, but that already that's already like a that's like already a win situation. So yeah. But again, it's like that's it's you're not really gonna get big values. No, because um, you yeah, like you said, you want to you don't want to use your E. Like ninety five percent of the time to be disabling anything. You want yes. to be using your E to position. Yes. Um and uh so the best pick was probably Mercenary Queen, um, given that like the pumpkins are mm. are really mm. prioritized, especially mm. in the bottom lane. Because if you're able to get six pumpkins, then it's like you can get that fort super easy, um, with the mercenary queen. The other talent is probably the um let me bring it up real quick. And just FYI to, to all your ETC players, I ended up going prog rock here, and this is mainly because I wanted to supplement Brightwing's healing as much as possible, mm -hmm. because they have a fairly decent lockdown blow-up type thing, and Brightwing doesn't have that on-demand heal until you get Blink Heal, and that mm -hmm. can Blink Heal can sometimes put you in really bad situations, as well as get you out of really bad situations, so any extra healing for me, and then once I finish my quest for the team, is gonna help. Yeah. Um, so again, real quick, back on that Sylvanas um, talent, um, probably the best, like, the most picked one is probably, the one that you should pick mostly is uh, either Overflowing, and uh, if it's a um, PvE map, you can just go Mercenary Queen, and you can just push and win the game that way. Um, so, other than that, let's get started. How do I, um, hold up. What's the, what's the, um, button to just, uh, where, like, you can have both visions now? I forgot I what it he... was. Is it, oh, okay, there you go. Yeah. So, you guys decide to do this. Um, it's very, very weird strategic, but, um, it's, I think it's okay. Okay, she e didn't like how I didn't like seeing, but okay. Okay, so I said back up team. Oh, that's funny. Oh, there it is, the lockdown. Okay. Oh! Oh! I almost, I almost saved her. Power slide in and get your W back. But we don't quite get the, uh... So we trade a person for a tower, which basically evens things out. So right now I'm pinging mid and bot because 
soaking incredibly important and you never ever as an ETC want to solo soak unless you literally have to Um, so right here, I already, there's a huge major problem, which is the posi um, the the posture. So you have Sonya in the bot lane, and you have Sylvanas in the top lane. Sylvanas is actually supposed to be in the bottom because, again, if you took that mercenary queen talent, um, you can if you guys are able to just gain control of this um, pumpkin and mm -hmm. their pumpkin. You guys will get a lot of value compared to if a Sylvanas is soloing and just um, getting that one pumpkin value, uh, one pumpkin camp value to that. So I mean, it's like, yeah, you'll you'll get it, and then you, um, but it won't be a huge value because it's not sure it's not really gonna take the four top, you know, unless and, it's super low. But like, and as yeah, we talked about the other week too, bottom lane in Towers of Doom is your biggest value because you have uh -huh. the double sapper camp down there. Yes. Bottom, the bottom camp is extremely important to have control of. Um, so yeah, this is a huge problem. And uh, also, another thing that I want to note for uh, ETC players in general is um, you never really want to slide to them. You want to slide to your team. And the way to do that is you you walk up, be um, you walk up to them, kind of use your W. And then after that, um, if you're behind, uh, if you're behind that person that's in the front line, you can just slide. But you slide to your team, so that way it's more safer for you. Because if you slide into the enemy team, they um, now you have no way of getting out, and you're just gonna die. And especially against a lockdown team like this, you there's a there's a high chance that if you slide in, you're just gonna die. Because then it's like a zombie wall, a root, and then a if uh, if you somehow live, uh, then there's the stitches hook that can just hook you back in, and then after that the team can just finish you off. So mm -hmm. again, yeah, the best way, and the Koreans do this a lot because it's like the safest way. And remember oh, too, excuse me. Um, you can you can you can start it up again if yeah. you want. Um, remember um, too with etc, uh, if you get zombie walled, your W can split the zombie wall. Yes. Um, so yeah, again, safest way to play ETC in a in a very uh, good ETC players like a very high level ETC is just like if you're able to pull that off. So again, walk up to them, get behind them, W, and then after that, slide to your team so that that way um, you're safe. You know, you're not you're not being in the middle of the t uh, the enemy team and just getting uh, CC and just getting. Um, killed because again once you slide in you have you the only way that you can get out is by walking out and uh, that's not really a good thing uh, because <laughs> you know you're just gonna get locked down you're just gonna die you're just gonna get focused so yeah always be careful of your slides but again with how you slide over here these two heroes uh, Arthas and Rhaegar that was a fine slide because you're 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 close to your teammates and um, one way to get and they already used their CC so like your way of and like again it's a very early game so like they're not really gonna kill you so like it's okay and like you have top uh, you can just walk up and get out or so yep. yeah That's an okay slide, just because there's no really no um, uh, incredibly uh, damage dealers near you. Unfortunately, my DPS and my heals got locked down from the Arthas thing and couldn't follow up Heroes. on the knockback. So, Falstad dies on bot. Sonya kills oh, Falstad. Shit. Fuck champ. <laughs> Go for Alright. We'll just do a little bit of zoning. Brightwing comes up. I get the channel. Sony, of course, gets the bottom channel. So, good start. It's a good start. Again, encouraging teammates during play. Very good. Try to keep... Try to keep the happiness. Happiness quotient up. It's three man bot. Rain is rotating around. Okay. 
So let's pause here real fast. So, as a Rainer, when you see three en people of the enemy team, or okay, as anybody, as when you see three members of the enemy team that pushed up to your wall, you want to be going around the back. Yeah, you, you want do to not want to walk part. through, especially <laughs> when you've got your Nazebo locked down and Arthas locked down between you and the gate. And uh, just in general as well, it's like with any any comp, if you walk down to where the enemy team is pushing to your wall, the only what they're blocking your 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 escape, your safe uh, your safe uh, zone. So it's just like there's no way that you're gonna get past them. So it's better to just uh, walk to um, rotate to the safe way, so that, that way you are already in the safe zone. And then if you want to poke, if you want to poke them or whatever, then you yeah. can do. You're so behind the again, wall. Yeah, you're behind the wall. Yeah, <clears throat> exactly. So it's just like, um, yeah. So just always be careful of your rotations. Your rotation in in this game in general is extremely important. All right. So unfortunately, oh, rip. the rest of the team continued to engage, and you don't want to do that. If you see. If you're in a 3v3, you see your team member go down and you're half health already, you back up. Like, we, they, that Sony was definitely close enough to the gate that we could have just... And see, the Raynor even said, I should have gone the safe way, so... Yeah. <clears throat> good, good to recognize mistakes. And you see, right now, as I'm playing, I do have an escape, but I'm only playing around mid with ETC because I can only see a few of them on the map so you gotta be cognizant of ganks when you're missing a lot of people um in this scenario given that already the the posture the the positioning of specific um heroes is already fucked um I think it would have been better for you to be with your three man bottom lane and have Brightwing um, stay middle because again you have a global so it's just like if you're ever in a 3v3 and you guys are somehow losing that Brightwing can teleport and make that mm -hmm. a 4v3 so yeah always always be always be aware of that I mean also they have a global yes but again it's like their false that should have been in the top lane um, or middle lane you know um, global against global and then after that um, the solo laners would have been like Arthas and Sonya top, and then the three man would have been like a Nazebo, Nazebo Rhaegar, and uh, and a Stitches. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's so. Just always be aware that um, positioning correctly is also extremely important. Like the the lanes being in the lane and in, in, in your designated lane, lane is super important. Okay, so. They have level 7s. We don't have level 7s. So this is one of the things you, we gotta be careful. We're posturing up a little bit right now, but this is this is not not necessarily the a fight we want to take. This is okay. Oh, there's a stitches hook. It's knocked back. No one dies. There's a little bit of chase. Okay, so that could have been a lot worse. Should we have engaged as hard as we did? Probably not, just because we didn't have sevens yet. But overall, still doing good. Grabbing merc camps. And again, I right wing I, should have been middle. Yeah, uh, I definitely think that um, after, um, since everyone was already here, um, you guys could have just um, five man push bottom or four man push bottom, and then you have one top, uh, one rotating at the top, and then um, the four of you push bot. Because again, having control in the bottom lane is extremely important because you're controlling two pumpkins now instead and of. And having Sylvanas control. makes that that much yes, easier. Yes, makes easier. Yes. Okay, so top lane, Merc camps sniffed out. Ooh. <laughs> I rotate around to try and help what I can. Knock off. Grab that. 
Cool. But there's nothing nothing to be done for the Sylvanas at that point. Yeah, Brightwing yeah. could have teleported top. Yeah. I think I think she sh I think that Brightwing should have done it. Yeah. All right. Wait. Is is this still your placement games? Mm-hmm. Um. Do you know what rank this was? Kind of curious to This myself. is uh, low plat. Oh really? Mm -hmm. Hey, my Smurf is around there. Hmm. So this is this is a uh, this is the kind of the kind of stuff you see in the flat area. Yeah, I just I just play like a high level uh, heroes and just carry that way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so shrines are up. They are ten now. So we have to be very careful. Um. So, given the situation that you're, it's nine and ten. It's best to just really trade. Um. But, um. I'll explain if. Uh, I mean, let's see if this is done correctly. But yeah, so, usually you just want to trade this because there's really no reason yep. to fight over. So I'm, um, I'm posturing up here to try to do some block blocks. So Brightwing should be channeling this right now. Yes. And Brightwing and is not channeling. She wasted several seconds. Oh no. And that, that few seconds right there, because she didn't start as soon as it came up, cost us. Yeah, so now, that's really... Now we need to back out. This is the... We should not necessarily be fighting here still. Mm. And right now, I'm trying to save my teammates as much as possible. Oh, that hurt this. No! Yep. So I got a power slide <coughs> through to block off a few people, but they're still... I, what are you... It's like, guys, guys... Okay, so so basically, this was it was a really good posture up on this. You want to definitely be around those bushes because that's most likely where they'll come in, and at least you'll have vision from all those places. But the problem is the Brightwing did not start the channel immediately. Yeah, if the Brightwing capped right away, I think uh, that scenario would have been fine. Like it, it was a perfect posture that you and Sonya um, uh, were at the bush, um, so that, that way you guys can. Just stall them as much as possible so that that one person caps. In in us usually uh, most cases you just want to have the, your healers cap and then off and then off the other four um just um defend um so like posture up so that, that way um your damage um pushes them away rather than having like one damage dealer capping and then you have mm -hmm. your support with you. Exactly, yeah. it, you're much more threatening. Yes. So just just for our uh, Sonya death count tracker, we are now up to four deaths. Seven minutes in, so that that was fun. Just because you're Sonya does not mean you have to go silly ham all the time. Okay, okay. Let me let me just uh, bring this up real quick. So. <laughs> uh, Sylvanas, her level 4 talent, she went Withering Barrage. So, never go that talent. Um, <laughs> there's, there's, there's absolutely no reason for you to get that one extra charge and fire faster. Like, that, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Like, you're still gonna put damage um, in. I mean, yeah, you, you'll put damage faster, but it's like, Sylvanas' damage is not really that high. She's usually used for, like, to push, um, to push She's, lanes. Yeah, and her, so on. her strength is yeah. in her pushing. And poke. Yeah, and poke. <clears throat> so at level four, you really want to take Lost Soul because for every W that hits a hero, it's uh, the cooldown goes um, goes to, it's cooldowns it goes down the cooldown reduction yes. by a, mi a second and twenty five. So that's incredibly long. Uh, that's incredibly good. So if you hit five, um, five, um, five, the enemy team like. Five, um, the shadow dagger is gonna go from like ten seconds to like five to four seconds, and that's uh, that's incredibly good because again, it's great poke is, too. Yeah, Sylvanas isn't really meant to burst someone down. She's just meant to poke someone and just poke them out of the lane and push, um, push uh, your fort or whatever. Just put pressure on the map. Um, so yeah, level four, you always take lost soul when you're playing Sylvanas.
Um, seven is also you want to take barb shots. Barb shots, especially in this map too, barb shot is incredibly good because it makes you take uh, the the pumpkins a lot faster compared to if you have unstable poison. Mm. Uh, unstable poison can clear the waves fast, um, but it's you're never. It's like if you have lost uh, lost soul. Um, the level four talent you can eat and like there's heroes uh, enemy heroes on that lane you can you can just use that loss uh, that lost soul value and just keep on uh, just uh, eliminate all of the um, minions or whatever but uh, note that again it's just like disabling uh, minion wave is good enough you do not need you do not need to have infinite uh, insanely amount of um, uh, wave clear like again <laughs> disabling is just already good enough there's yeah. really no need and it's just like if you're and there's better you know, stuff yeah so and also note that like sylvanas is supposed to be in uh in the four man or three man so it's like you're gonna have people there clearing with you so yeah, yeah and this is this is one of the problems from the very start of the game is sonia should have been our solo laner and sylvanas should have been with other people pushing mm -hmm. because sylvanas will get so much more value <clears throat> while she's pushing and she has people to back her up and make her more dangerous. Mm -hmm. And make her more annoying. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. But, uh, let's see. Oh, Rainer. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. All right. Rip. So oh. I have Warren Falstad is coming down. So they should have backed off a while ago. More Arthur Shroots. Sony dies again. Oh. So yeah, given the situation, um, I think for you, it sh you should have been there because, um, so the way I look at how um, low elos are being played, so if if one person is in that lane, um, they're not gonna go to that lane. They're gonna go somewhere else. So you kind of just want to play mind games a little bit with your teammates mm -hmm. and like, so you go. So like again, like how the lane phase is supposed to be, where like Sonya is top. So if you just went ahead with the four man, um, and then you could have just typed and told the Sonya to go top, and then that might have just fixed the the whole laning situation. But uh, yeah, overall, I think that's what you should have done. Though. Yes, and yeah. this is and this is one of the things that I'm personally still working on is need to be vocal more vocal with your teammates besides just um, congratulating good plays uh, if you know the macro strategy type it like mm -hmm. if they don't follow it there's zero you can do about it but yeah, if, they, the best but you if can... they do you can at least try and set yourself up for the best strategy possible and and like we were talking about earlier what I should have done in this situation is I should have had either Sonya or I should have had Brightwing be up in the solo solo lane, one in the middle and three bottom push. Yeah, and then um, note that again, it's like if even if you say something and they don't listen, it it's probably it's best to just obviously soak a lane, but like soak the lane closest to the most um the most place where it's gonna happen, like team fight wise and so on. So like. So like let's say you told um you told Sonya to go top and the Sonya doesn't listen. So yeah, you're going to lose that top uh, that top soak, but if you stay at middle, your rotations will be a lot faster and if there's a fight breaking down, um you would be a lot closer so mm -hmm. you can just rotate there and do and do whatever needs to be done. For but sure. uh, yeah, since because you were top lane, um you're so far away from the the fight at this uh at this uh pumpkin that like you weren't able to rotate and and just help so like mm -hmm. yeah it cost you two uh two players and yeah it gave them the ability to uh cap that pumpkin <coughs> yeah tod it's it's tod um the map can go incredibly long compared to the other maps Okay, so this one, this one's shut down. So at this, at this point, this tower shall serve the Lord. And this is there's there's only so much you can do when you have people saying it's over mid game. But um, um, be more okay. 
So I want to point something out is um so given in this situation um best usually the best case is obviously you have to, um give this up and um go and just uh give them these two alters and then after mm -hmm. that take that back so you're gonna take that ten damage but um if you had a better draft and uh, this and then this scenario happened again what you could have what you could do is just leave this bottom fort that's already been taken and just go fight. Um, all fight, go fight at one. E yeah, fight either at one or if you if you guys can split fight, then you guys can split fight. Um, make sure and make sure that like that um, during the split fight is like you make sure that you have that one person fighting on that um, isolated um, altar while there's like a larger group at that other altar. So make sure you bring that. Make sure you bring um, bring your big group on that. Um, yeah. On that other altar, so that that way it's a fair fight. You know, like a four B. And, and honestly, in this case. Since it's 13 to 11, it probably is safer to group fight rather than split fight, just um, just because of the level difference. Well, the the thing the thing that um the thing with that is that like you guys do not really have a comp to where like you guys can fight when you guys are a talent behind. So that's why I said that like yeah, it's, just uh, the best this, thing is just... yeah. In this in this case, give them up. Yeah, because it's, it's and rough. and then after that, just take the bottom. Um, bottom back, and then um, you have you would have your bright wing go soak top, so that, that way you you're still having that one person soak top, and you and you, the three of you can just take back the take back the bottom fort. Mm -hmm. See, look now it's like okay, now you have four man, great, but um, and you have Sylvanas soaking, and yeah, you guys give it up, but it's better. It's like if you had Sylvanas middle soaking. Well, actually, Sylvana shouldn't be soaking, but like if you had Sonya top soaking and pushing, you guys could have, uh, you guys probably would have got that wall at least. So it might have given you like a little bit of an XP. Um, uh, might have like helped you caught uh, catch sure. up on the XP. And then uh, Sylvanas, uh, obviously, Sylvanas should have been bottom, so that, that way you guys can disable the fort. And then um, Brightwing be in the middle, given so that she can um, soak and then global teleport in if needed to. Yep. But yeah. So like yeah, if you guys if you guys are in a shitty comp situation, it's best to just soak all the lanes mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, give it up to try to catch up, and then after that for the next tribute, you guys will be equal level and you guys can maybe do something. Yeah. I would have I would have said at this point as well if if you had like a hyper carry like a Li Ming Avala or Grey Main. Um, just like one of the heroes within the comp, I think you guys could have just fought instead because Mosh is a is, is a really uh, break uh, miss or break. Mm -hmm. um, so like if you're able to get like a four man Mosh, then it's like you're gonna win that fight. Uh, and then you especially if you have a hyper carry like Greymane, Leeming, or Fala, then it's like they're just gonna destroy whoever's in that four man uh, four man Mosh. And after that, you guys will win the fight, and you guys will ever will be able to have. Uh, Map uh, gain that map control again. You guys can yep. take back that bottom fort, and then uh, take that top, and then take that bottom. Take take back your bottom fort, and take their bottom fort, and possibly um, start doing the uh, uh, ring around the rosy, and just you know, yep. uh, take the middle, and then take the top, and then uh, take the middle again, take the bottom, you know, and then like you guys will be XP ahead after if you guys do that. Not sure how Sonya got there. Yeah, um, that's very poor positioning again. And our, our, for those keeping track, our Sonya death counter is now up to six. So, uh, it's, it's getting, it's getting painful at this point. And, uh, yeah, again, um, uh, I've experienced this stuff, uh, in my Smurf, and like, this, <laughs> given this, um, there's really nothing that you can do. Um, I mean, otherwise would have been like, oh, you can macro play them, but uh, yeah, if they don't listen to your macros, then it's just like, yeah, and this is you're just gonna again, have to take this loss. Yeah, it's again, this is this is something that as you get better at the game, is just something you need to to do, and something I didn't do enough of this game is type out type out what to do. Yeah, and sometimes uh um. You're gonna get these type of games in low elo, so it's just like don't don't be harsh on yourself. You know, like you guys can always get those points by. Oh! Yep. All 
Okay, so from here, I right. I click. It is a god. Yes, <laughs> that's one. From here, I click. Uh, towers. Team wants to go boss, so I say okay. Because technically, tower taking towers is far better than than taking boss. But we go ahead and take boss. Um. So, um, this situation is actually correct. Um, I liked what you guys did here. You guys have your foreman, and also like again, Sylvanas. Yeah, Sylvanas is um, moving up, so that's yeah, good. Sylvanas is pushing the top uh, for it, so it's really so. It's again, it's really good. So like you're doing two to one, you're getting uh, two values mm -hmm. instead of having five men on the boss, and like again, it's good. She realized it because um, Gray, I mean not Grayman, uh, Rainer and Sonya just do just does a lot of damage to mm -hmm. the the early this early boss. So it's just like and it, again, it's she, it's, it's one of those things. That. If that's if that's what your team is moving towards, then especially you as a tank player, support them. Don't go off and do your own thing. All right, so we take we take tower. Things are spawning. Yay! I say, okay, let's go grab the the uh, the tower or the uh, altars. Team wants to go mid. Okay. All right, team. We go mid. This. This is a little greedy, right here, guys. Oh. This is greedy. Yeah, so I think what could have, what you should have just done, instead of calling for that mid four, you guys could have just positioned for um, their altar. Mm -hmm. So you try to get two. So you try to get two altars and then um, give them the one. But I mean, if you can uh, try to, um, if you. If you can try to get all three, that would be great. But since they have a damage dealer global and you have a support global, it's best. And yeah. that that support global isn't really going to do much. So it's that this, that DPS global is just going to push away your support global. So and this it's is best another to really thing. Just position. And this is another thing you really got to watch. You got to be watching the talents because Stitches has Gorge and he can pull this crap. We didn't have anything of the middle down at all. So now Sonya is dead again. Now we are we are low, and now what we had as a major advantage has turned into a huge loss. You guys could have definitely just positioned the their um their side of the mm -hmm. top altar, and then after that get your altar. So then it's like you guys have ten damage going to their core while you have three damage going to your core and that's perfectly fine and then after that you guys will have map control and you guys are able to do whatever you want to do yeah. either team fight or soak more catch up on soaking try to get 16 yeah. remember remember so. we're only 11 30 into this game right now so it's just it's just greediness and so this is this was dumb on my part so at this point at this point, the team is split up, and they're a level ahead, and at that point, you just give that one up, because there's no there's no backup for that. Yeah. So that, that um, was, died, so I died there unnecessarily. Um, this could be a little bit of a greedy call, but um, since, so if you're on the enemy team, and you manage to kill ETC and maybe someone else, you guys could hold off that uh, cap right here. Have false that capture top, um, so that that way it's mm -hmm. four four damage now, and you guys can cap this one as well. And remember, you guys do have pumpkin, so you guys can't get the pumpkin. Stall this altar, and then after that push, because look, look at the uh, the HP of this four. It's incredibly low. So so like this pumpkin camp can take that four, mm -hmm. and then after that it'll be five damage, and uh, and you guys can win it off if, uh, if you guys played that correctly. You guys. Um, this enemy team, if played correctly, could have just won at this moment right here. But yep. because they immediately just grabbed it, and now it's like they have to wait for the next altar. And then now for your guy, for you guys, um, you chance. guys still yeah. have yeah the chance to get back yeah. to the game. <clears throat> Again, though, with death timers that low, the best play after we've taken top tower would have been to posture for their side. Make sure we get someone like Brightwing or something on our side to cap, and yes. then she could pop back in. It's, yeah. Yeah. It was the 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 middle going for the middle fort as well was a greedy call, for uh, for our Sonia just because of it was it wasn't damaged at all yet. Yeah. 
Um, so another Oof. thing I want to point oh, before that that amazing hook, um, I want to mention quickly as well is so the way to play behind this game, uh, behind Towers of Doom is to stagger the death and also and um, have map control. So how you get map control is first step one is to um, win a team fight, um, and then after that again stagger some death, and then after that you get that map control um, because. Uh, even if you're one HP away, you can still win the game. Like I was, a, I was playing an SEL game, and like we were just staggering death, just picking them off when they try to get like a um, pumpkin ca uh, camp or something. So it's just like you want to play for picks, and mostly the only way they can get picks is mostly um, in the bottom, the bottom um, side or the top side. Middle mm -hmm. side, you're not really gonna get much of a um, pick unless like they're really pushed. Um, yeah, unless you're poorly positioned. Your yeah. So right so now, that's... Sylvanas, Sylvanas is not with us. Another God Mode Mosh right here. Oh, these God Moshes, look! But they're not winning the game for you! Yeah. Yep. So right now, I'm just trying to peel from my team as much as possible. I think you could have stayed with the Sonya and help her. Um, I understand that it was probably the better call to disengage, but given that the Sonya just wanted to fight, uh, if you just have Sonya keep spin spin the win, she'll she'll stay alive. Uh, uh, she'll she'll stay alive, and uh, and she's spinning on top of like three heroes or so. Um, she will keep her HP. Uh, yeah, and, and that's the and that's fine. that was uh, that was super rough, right? Because yeah, it was super yeah. Again, it's like I understand your decision. Like you just wanted to disengage, which probably should have happened. But given that the Sonya, I wanted think to I would have died if I had stayed in. Um. Okay. So another thing is um, that yeah, you could have died there. But if your Sonya was able to wipe them, then it would have been a better value. You you get me? Sure. So like sure. one 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 for four or one for three is is a uh, probably a. A really good value, and again, it's like you have a Sylvana, so you're so who given wasn't that, there? Like, yeah, she wasn't she, there, but like she got she got middle during this whole thing. Mm -hmm. So she yeah, grabbed middle, but like, but... but like again, like given the situation, yeah, she wasn't there. But if the Sonya was able to get three people, people, and you helped her, and but you but you end up dying, that um, just having Sylvana's presence in this game can like you guys can take the you guys can push for that mm. bot um, fort and bought um um your and you guys can get back your bot for it and then take their bot for it and then now it's like you guys have map control here because this top is still healthy this middle is healthy and um this pumpkin is gonna spawn when pretty much when you guys finish doing this because again three people on the enemy team are dead so they're not really able to defend um this for yeah and at the, at the same time you know that that can that makes yeah, Sonya called for help. I, I think, yeah, I think even and, though the best call was to disengage, I think it just would have been better if you guys just helped the Sonya because yeah. Sonya, yeah. And so, and sure. so this is the interesting thing too, right? Is because um, it probably, looking at it in retrospect, would have been better to stay because they had our fort right there. So from a retreat path perspective, you're not going to be able to retreat super well through an enemy control fort. Well, it's not... Um, I would say that's a little bit of a wrong way to look at. So, um, again, just like having... Um, so, like, understanding a hero can be significant regardless of, this, of like, the map um, maps that um, you're playing. So, again, yeah, you guys didn't have a fort. Um, you guys didn't have a fort to kind of retreat to, mm -hmm. but again, just because Sonya can um, can light can sustain, sustain herself, so well. yeah, in a team fight just by spinning, you guys could have won that fight. So that so that that um, kit in Sonya is is so huge that like yeah, again, you guys could have just won that fight, and then after that, gain a map control in the mm -hmm. bottom, and then and so on like that. Sure. So yeah. So try so like yeah, just make sure that like try to look at the stream. So that's why I said that like drafting is super important because it kind of shows the strength that of like what you guys can do 
in a certain type of situations. Mm -hmm. Again, with the whole Sonya, if the Sonya just spin the win and you guys helped her, you guys could have just killed three, and then after that, yeah. Sure. Or at least, at least potentially had a better chance. Yes, had a better win. chance. But um, it's still 4-4. Oh, um, so you guys have to... Let's see. So basically this is a... Uh... Um... Another thing I want to note um, for ETC as well, um, for his 13 talent, you went mic check. Um, mic check isn't really picked majority of the time. It's always going to be Encore or Face Melt, but probably Encore is probably the best uh, talent there to pick because then because now you leave an amp behind, and then after that, two seconds later, um, uh, you'll push um, your knock people uh the enemy away uh, mm -hmm. wherever the amp is so it's like your second w and you can use that w as like a bush uh, a vision a vision so you so like in that's in that scenario where you got hooked if um you get you can uh, just walk back to your bush um press w on that uh, when you're in the bush, and after that, you leave an sure. amp behind, and yeah, it could have just maybe helped vis um, help vision a little bit. Usually, I mean, it doesn't really matter because, like, yeah, you live, but like in most, in some cases, is where like an amp is always good. In general, amp um, going that 13 encore is always mm -hmm. good to kind of have because it it'll just that knock that second knockback is pretty good because now sure. it's like okay, it, um, let's say like you leave an amp um in that bush and they all pushed in now that amp uh, triggers and it pushes them to your torch you guys if your team was in position you could have just slide in and then mosh or do whatever you know with that um with that uh amp so that amp can be can uh, i wouldn't really be a i wouldn't really say like it's a huge um hit uh breaker uh hit or break but like at the same time it's very very useful it can be good yeah yeah it could be significant it can be significant the the scary thing here is this is this is potentially end. I've got 20 seconds still till Mosh. Hook misses. So right now we're just kind of trying to stall as much as possible. But right now it's basically just a stall, stall, stall. Sonia, again, a little far out. And there's the hook, nice, nice. This, I mean, this stitches was on with hooks. You gotta give props oh. to the stitches. Sonya dies. We ended up getting Falstad. And for some reason, they stopped channeling. <laughs> this was, <laughs> it's like, yeah. guys, guys, I am trying my best. I mean, mechanically wise, you're playing your ETC pretty well. Um, I would say it's just really just the decisions that can be worked on. Like these these moshes are were significantly amazing. Those two four man moshes, oh my god. Oof. All right. So we're still we're still in this thing, team. Down to 24. Our poor Sonya now is died nine times. Pain in my mosh pit. At this point, we have to be super careful. So, at this point, we need to kind of position around boss a little bit, or at least keep vision on it, because that is their that's an end game for them. Mm -hmm. Again, you guys could have just the fault. I mean, the Brightwing could have just soaked somewhere else. Yeah, she so doesn't that, need to be uh, here. Yeah, she doesn't need to be there. She has teleport. So at this point, it's it's basically just a cat and mouse game at this point, because the enemy team knows that they can finish us with the boss. So it's just like, okay team, let's soak. And yes, as as a global, especially if your global is up, you should be soaking another lane. And getting us closer to 20. Alright, Syndagosa comes out. Puck goes oh. in. I'm gorged. I do have Mosh. Oh. oh, 
thank god. Yeah. I didn't quite get false dead in, unfortunately. Yeah, I think that's it. Yep. That, that's game. Um, so yeah, it's just a little bit of, uh, mac uh, macro. Uh, macro. Mm -hmm. And, uh, obviously, Being talking, like, talking to your teammates a little more. Yeah. This is this is this is like my takeaways from this. Look at the look at this god god stitches. Yeah. Like. Um, and also note that uh, drafting is also important. So like that Rainer pick was very, was in a very awkward. It was just an awkward pick. Yeah. Like if you guys had like a gray main, a baller Lee Mink, then like it would have made the Sylvana Sylvanas pick a okay because that that hyper carry yep. can just really um, can just win you that game you know because you know again you have these insane mods so like if you just had that Grammy follow up or that hyper carry follow up it's gonna run that yep. but um oh, GG's yep also never at the end never say your teammate has been feeding if he, you have significantly more deaths than your teammate just as a general, as a general rule. I don't know why I moved back to the Towers of Doom map. Um, yeah, so takeaway takeaways from that for for me personally, macro decisioning. It's it's very hard to control the draft in Hero League. You can yeah. you can make suggestions uh, as much as you want, but at the end of the day, you want people playing things they're good at. Mm -hmm. Which in a lot, in some, in many cases, will be better than meta picks that they're not good at. Mm -hmm. So, as far as draft goes, you make suggestions, you play your best, you work with what you got. From a macro decision making perspective, this was this should be on me because if you have the knowledge, and I'm speaking for myself, if you have the knowledge, you should be at least attempting to provide that for the rest of the team. So, mm -hmm. just saying Sonya Soak Top or Brightwing Soak Top so that Sylvanas can be with, uh, with your three man or with your four man, uh, depending on how, how you end up running it. It's just one of those things. They might not listen, but at least you're doing yourself a service by saying it. Yeah. And if, it, um, and if they, they listen, it's even better. Yeah, I mean, again, it's just like I I had those games where uh, I was playing on my Smurf. Yeah, they don't like you. Just you know, you just gotta do the best you can with the given situations that you have, and you just like you know, if one person can't soak, I mean, if like that one person isn't soaking, then it's just like you gotta take his place and soak. Yeah, because um, the soak is, <laughs> and I mean, you you might could argue it a little bit, but at the end of the day, I would I would assume just having someone in the lane especially earlier game for the soak is probably more important mm -hmm. yes um and also understanding uh the role that you're playing so like if you're playing a dps role and like let's say um let's say like okay you're playing a deep like let's say you're playing dps uh whatever and that's sonia just decide not to but you're playing like a hyper carry um so what you can do is really just soak the best you can and really just try to ignore the the team fights as as uh as much as possible in the early phase so like um if you're able to at least so like let's say the first alter uh the first wave of the altar spawns so it's the three one mm -hmm. the three altars and what you could do is like as long as you capture one it's fine and you can just uh go um go soak somewhere safe go soak um Go soak and just push. Try to get a wall if possible. And yeah, yeah. going one um, and two, the first altar phase is not the end of the world. Yeah, it's not, not the, end, the of the end of the world at all. Yeah, <laughs> like it can sometimes even be better to give up one if you yeah. can get better soak because of it. Yeah, and not so die. like, so like early, so like the way I look at it is like early game is like soak as much as you can, and then once it gets to mid game, then it's like you can decide if it's like oh you can. Um, uh, you can soak, or you just be in a team fight. But in most cases, during the middle middle game, it's like you should just um, soak. Mm -hmm. I mean, not soak. Sorry, uh, yeah, team fight. team fight. Yeah, be with yeah. And team. then uh, late game is obviously team fight only. But uh, yeah. Yep. Well, uh, good review. Yeah. And uh, like... also, 
Also, again, with that, um, with that step or with that scenario, it's like if you're playing a tank, then you have to be in that format. But if you're playing a DPS role, then you can uh, substitute um, that solo laner and you just take that spot. Yep. But again, unless you unless you are forced role. because of your teammates to have yes. to soak something else, because mm -hmm. soaking is incredibly at least it's at least early game. It's, soaking is incredibly important. Um, so yeah, it's 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 a good lesson. I mean, good lesson in macro, right? You can have you can have all the mechanics you want, but if you get out rotated, if you get out macroed, then you can lose the game simply on that. All right, um, Juki, do you have time for an unranked? Yes. All right, yes. we will be switching over to our unranked draft here. Oh. Whoop. There we go. And uh, we will be crossing our fingers that we do not get the Garden of Terror. Oh yeah, I don't I don't want to play Garden. Please no. No one wants to play Garden. No one wants to play. All oh, these Q I wanna times. I want to play support. Black Hearts Bay. All right. So very PvE oriented map. Extremely PvE oriented map. So uh, the less you have to team fight on this map, the better. So good, good laning, good soaking, high priorities. Globals aren't too bad. All right, so I am last pick. So I will can fill. Now, if you got a good Zool, <clears throat> if you got a good Zool on this map, this is an incredible uh, map for Zool because you can your Zool, as long as they're decent, can soak mid and top lane if they soak safely by themselves while you have a strong four man to push bottom. It's incredibly, incredibly strong. Oh, and the enemy team knows it. <laughs> oh, sad day. I mean, Sylvanas can kind of do the same thing, but like we were talking about in the last map, usually you want your Sylvanas with your multi-man to get the most value out of it. Dan. Oh, I wish it was a heavy uh, so I can get the insane um, values from Monk. I think I'm gonna have to pick Malf here. Unless they unless they pick it. And I'll play Ari or something. Hulk. Oh boy. What a pick. What a pick. No let me support. Oh, rip. Rip, Juki. <laughs> the one time I want to play support. <laughs> people are taking it. <laughs> this never happens, people. <laughs> <laughs> this never happens to me. Someone that wants to support? What the crap? Okay, so just just looking at the Butcher pick right now, I'm leaning a little more toward Johanna. Uh, the Kael'thas Kerrigan isn't a terrible pick. That gives us a lot of lockdown, for sure. Follow up CC. Um, mm -hmm. I think it would be better if you picked uh, either ETC or Murden here because you. I do understand why you want to pick that um, blind. I, I will go ETC if I can. I will always go ETC if I can, just because of how powerful ETC is. Uh, but I I, so, I agree. It's yeah. So the reason why um, most teams are really just prioritizing ETC Murden or um, Terio being picked a lot more too now is um, is um, they can ETC and Murden can do almost everything that mm -hmm. Johanna can't do. So like even though 
Yeah, even though like yes, the jo Johanna has the blind on the auto attackers, but like the auto, but the auto attackers can still um, move, and uh, because of that, it's just like oh, they they can still walk towards you and then just like have to wait a couple seconds to auto attack or whatever. But with the etc Murden, it's like they have the stun, and then uh, yeah, you stop them from moving, and that pretty much just kind of. Um, has a better value than just blinding someone person. Obviously, Johanna is still an okay pick to get, but like, um, it's it would be after the etc is either banner pick or the. And it's a little um, less Merton's so too pick. because yeah. the only thing Johanna is countering right now is is butcher because she's got the she's got the physical armor. Alright, so he went Butcher, so I can go Monk, go Earth Ally, and uh, I'm gonna go Palm, so uh, yeah, don't oh, be afraid. Sick palms. Oh, sick yeah. palms. Are, are you are you cleanse dashing? Uh, I'm Is actually gonna go DPS. Um, yeah, well, well, we'll see, we'll see. Um, usually I um, I won't, but the fact that they have Taronda and Gul'dan, it's safe for me to go the damage and just put a, a lot of pressure to their backline and then also it's like I have palm for like um, for like emergency if things goes bad for sure. like the ETC or like one of the backline uh, our backliners and I, 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 like, agree, yeah. I agree with chat one thing I wouldn't have minded instead of maybe even the Kerrigan uh, I wouldn't have minded terribly seeing a Dahaka there mm -hmm. Oh man, four man. Let's uh let's win the video game. All right. So, uh like you're talking about PvE is extremely important on this map. If you can get an early lead, it's it's all about map control. You don't have to team fight necessarily on this map to win. You just control the map. Yes. Um, I think I might block party this time around. Um, block party is fine. Um, I can I can keep up with the heals. Don't worry about me. Uh, just note that I'm gonna go Earth Ally 100%. So maybe you can go Prog Rod too as well. And uh, yeah, if you want to go Earth Ally. I can yeah, because you don't you don't want to have like two being the same, you know. And Earth, uh, I would they say that they don't Earth stack. Ally, they don't stack. Yeah, and I would I would say that Earth Ally gives a better value than uh, Block Party because it's only like what two charges or so or one charge. Two charges. But Earth Ally yeah. is like infinite of charge. Oh wait, I got to stop. Oh, you guys are taking a lot of damage. Oh. Oof. All right, this is when we want to back up. They should have backed up. Right. Yeah. So what what you could have done there is just be the front line for the KT because the fact that like the KT was behind you technically, um, it put them in an easier spot to really just CC chain that KT and die. So if you were in front of the KT, they would have been scared because you know ETC can like uh, W them or uh, just slide uh, slide them. Wait, I'm getting flamed. Getting flamed. Toronto? Alright, Sylvanas died by. We got vision back. We don't want to rotate out too far. Kerrigan's going bot to help out. Falstad's up here. I'm trying to collect as many globes as I can. But we're going to have to be somewhat careful because we don't have vision top. Nice. 
little pick up there. Oh, nice line. Toronto? Body blocks, body blocks. Oh, you guys can go for that guy. Yeah. Good body blocks. That was really good. Yeah, never underestimate the value of learning how to body block. It's incredibly, incredibly useful. Alright, we have the doubloons. Uh, me and Juki can turn in. Oh, yeah, let's actually go turn in. Give us a really good head start. We can rotate to bottom afterwards. Alright. Alright, Kale, you need to stay up there, dude. Yeah. I don't know. KT didn't need to come on. Oh, we can go for this false dead. Yes, like. Yep. Alright, ready whenever you are? Didn't even need a slide. Nope. Oh, we now we can camp. grab. We, now we can grab yeah. camp. KT is doing a decent job soaking both lanes, and it's something he can do fairly well with flame strike. All right, now we've got a very strong push bottom. Kalfas got ganked oh, top. We, can we really see, push this. but yeah, we see they're all top. So now we can push, push this hard, especially with Sylvanas. All right, we still see them mid, so we can keep putting pressure onto this, onto this uh, fort, and we should be able to get it pretty easily. Now we can go back, take these camps. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we need to soak some. They're pushing top pretty hard. Actually, we can head towards them. Yeah. So I'm gonna move. I'm gonna move. Up. Uh, Sylvanas can take the camps just fine. Oh, beer muscles, you are you're in deep. Right now, right now, what I'm gonna try and do is I'm just gonna try and stall them out a little bit from yep. getting uh, the chests. See the mid bottom or middle chest was gotten, bottom chest was gotten because they were all grouped up, so they couldn't react fast enough. Oh shit! I'm coming down. Oh. oh 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 god mode. And that's uh, that worked out well too. All right, we've got turn in again. I'm turning in mine. To your end! Alright, I didn't have any follow up on that, but. Uh, we got Trinity. Uh, I'm coming to the side. We're gonna show our enemies a jolly good time first. Alright, now we need to we need to do our rotations. They're all uh, missing. Kept that, kept that vision yeah, they're all missing can. right now. There's Gul'dan. Okay, they're all mid still. So we're gonna take as much of these coins as we can. Uh, Mish, we can push pit. Top. Mish pit. Mish pit. Alright, Falstad is down bottom with Sylvanas, so we know that we got a 4v4 right here. He can't fly up quite this far. So we wanna. We should be able to take this now really easily. Alright, and we have turn in again. So what Toronto. we want to do is steal their camp real fast, maybe. All right, coming in with a slide. Coming in with a slide. Ooh. I'm silenced, which is fine. Nice gamosh. All right, sliding out back. Nice palm. Beautiful. And we turn in. Uh, we don't have to go back in yet. We can just turn. Oh, I have six, so I gotta turn in two. Yeah, I need but to. I was to say, I've got way too many uh, coins for uh, my comfort. You uh, never want to uh, hold too many coins, too. Like, if you can get a safe turn in, do it, because. Yeah. Just I'm gonna go. Skin. I'm gonna go get a drinky. Down bot here. No, no. No, no. Yeah, you don't. There's no reason to really there's invade zero, that. There's zero reason to invade at this point, because look, they're ten. They're all, uh, they're all up again. 
It's just needless uh, risk. Needless risk. All right, the captain mid again. Let's see if we can get a pick. Do I have have my boys. Uh, we gotta clear top. Let's go clear that. <gasps> Ooh. All right. Forty seconds on Mosh. And remember, as an ETC, when you get into these big things, I know some people's immediate reaction is press W to hit everything. Don't do that. It spreads all the minions out. All right. Oh, okay. I did not need to do that. Oh, I got a horrified book. I could have saved right. that bomb for KT. Yep. Now we back Oops. up. We lost lost the Kalthos. Uh, I thought that Kerrigan was gonna die. No. I got I got slid into the uh, the interrupt. That's my jam. All right. So at this point, we've got some camps we can get. Bottom camps open. They're still all grouped up. We have vision on most of them. We're gonna lose uh, this top chest. Potentially, I have Mosh up. Let's go. I have Palm up in two, uh, six seconds. So if now. I can find a good engage point, I will. But at this point, I'm not necessarily looking for a fight. We've got we're very far ahead on objective control. We do need to check boss. They're all there's no nope, no nope, they're not there. Okay. They do have turn in, so it's something we gotta watch. Um. If Varium postures up, it's trendy. They're checking boss. Yeah, they're probably turning in at this point. I mean, we could kill this there. Gotcha. All right, actually, um, push top, push this, and we can kind of look to boss if we can. We do boss. All right, all right. I got spotted. So I'm gonna stay in lane just for a second. So I think one or two is like in the bottom side right now. So did it is? Yep. We've got vision still. We're good. Falstad coming up. Varian's not gonna be able to do anything by himself. Nice, good mosh. All right, guys. All right, we can hard push this with the boss since we have Sylvanas. Yep, we might as well. Yeah, hard push at this point. Don't don't bother turning in the the mercs are uh, down bottom are a little annoying, but they'll get they'll get cleaned up. What we want to do is try and get this keep and then back up and turn in. Oh, wow, Basically, just support the boss as much as possible. Uh, that's fine. We we got gusted right. out. We can just do this real quick. Uh, can you anchor for us? Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is basically just they don't need me to soak damage at this point. I just stay here. I keep the vision. We grab, and then we go. Now we yeah, try and turn in if possible. And we can we can see them all. They cannot stop this turn in. Like they cannot get here in time. They're just busy cleaning up the the wave. We are gonna lose the bottom fort, which is it's fine. They're gonna lose one, possibly two keeps. And we're gonna go rotate around, get these mercs. Uh, spot. we can we uh we can get sorry fuck we can get this and after that push spot. Uh, honestly, you can just anchor for me as well, cause I can solo this. You don't need my my elite DPS. No. Frick. Juki, come on. <laughs> so the nice thing is, even though we didn't get the keep with the boss, we got it into position where our turn in gave it more value, and so because we got gusted out, we didn't push the issue and go in and engage.
Alright, there's the fear. Fear out. Knock oh. back. I've got to slide in just a second. Slide. Haha, <laughs> I palmed and got silenced. Lol. Beautiful. Everyone get close! For heals! And now we are pushing on their last keep with two of them down. So we'll push this. We can go grab that and then we'll have turn in. And then that will pretty much be game. Alright, let's go let's go chess. This is the safe yeah, way to do it. This is the safe way yeah. to do it. Yeah. We grab chess. We only need six more coins. We get turn in, we win. They are now stuck. Bottom lane. I'm pushing in all the lanes. Oh, uh, we can just get this camp. Yeah. Uh, I uh, stay stay with the uh, stay with the say uh, stay with him. I can solo this. And then basically, as soon as we turn in, we head straight to core. Uh, we don't really have to head straight to core. It's gonna end the game by. It's, will uh, will a single turn? I don't know if a single turn and takes down a full. Yeah, core. no, a single single turret will uh, destroy the core. See, you may you may be not you may know more than me. I'm, I'm sure actually you know more than me. <laughs> we'll see though. We'll see. Right, well, we can sit in here and watch. Sit here and watch. Actually, let's go kill them. Uh, I guess we can do that. Can we kill them? Yeah, we can kill them. Kill. Oh no! Oh no! Look at that. Look at that god palm. <gasps> I died. I died. And that's game. Oh, look at you. Okay, you're right. Yeah. No other structures. A full a turn in will kill a full core. Victory! Yar! Yar! I got flame for no reason. I know, right? Super carried. That's right. <laughs> what are you talking about? I had the best hero killing spree. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that's, I mean, we didn't fight that much. Like, if you look at, we, I mean, we killed him, we killed him a decent bit, but we mainly yeah, PvE'd like, that game, or took yeah. advantage of the map control that we gained while the PvE objective was going on. You don't have to really do a whole lot as far as be constantly fighting in that game if you are just smarter and control... just get the map control in the first place. It's very easy to keep afterwards if you if you play it right. So, like, and also note that, like, our draft wasn't really good, but, like, the fact that we just macro played like that pretty much, like, won us the game rather than... Um, uh, if we were just to fight consistently, because I think they had a better uh, blow up because they have Taronda and Varian, so like the Varian taunts and then Taronda stun. Well, I mean, and then look at their that, damage yeah. too. Falstad, Gul'dan, Butcher put yeah, out like, a crazy amount of damage. Yeah, they put a decent amount of damage, but like, yeah, we just played macro, and like, honestly, yeah, again, it's like they probably could have just run us over because you know with the butcher silence and then you have the gold dance horrify and all that stuff so like if they play correctly during each team fight then yeah they could have won but like and like again like our team fight is not that very good but like you know etc was able to get a like a good mosh and so on like that so like that kind of one of some of our fights some of our games yeah yeah and then just played the map objectives i mean mm -hmm. they didn't turn it they didn't have a single turn in yeah and it was they against the four stack in. too it yeah. was against a four stack yeah, so, good job, dude. Yeah. God, God mode palms. Good palms. <laughs> I, I messed except, one up. Except for I the Kerrigan. That was. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I messed that one up. I thought you was. What you gonna yeah. do? What you gonna do? Can't be perfect. No, I guess not.
<laughs> <laughs> well, guys, uh, thank you so much for coming out and playing. Playing. You didn't play, but I hope you played in your mind because <laughs> that's that's just how much fun this was. Uh, but thank you so much for coming out and uh, watching Master's Class. We really enjoyed putting this on. Uh, I'm learning a lot from this. This is not just this is definitely not a TBK knows everything. This is a TBK needs to learn stuff as well. And we're kind of learning stuff together. And hopefully you guys are getting some really good information from watching all this as well. Um, so you can follow me on Twitter at TBKZord. Uh, you can check out my Heroes podcast, Lords of the Storm, at the link below. It says podcast. It's it's pretty sweet, if I do say so myself. And uh, you guys should go follow Juki as well, at JukiHots and twitch.tv slash Juki underscore. Juki, you stream a bunch, right? Yeah, um, I'm actually looking to stream tonight as well if uh, SCL is going on, if SCL is alive tonight. So if it's alive tonight... Uh, and what is, what is SCL for in. those that, that don't know what SCL is? So SCL is a in-house for pros, and it's uh, it's obviously it's a pro league, So like, um, and a few, a few people got um, selected, um, got vouched in. Um, that's, that's me. Um, being that one person <laughs> being vouched in, um, and uh, yeah, it's uh, you get to see how the meta is in terms of like in a very high mm -hmm. level co uh, competitive. And you get to listen meta. to high level comms as yeah, well, you get to which see, is like, really how we communicate, and yeah, and, uh, so uh, you get to see some amazing plays, you know. So it's like it's a, it could be a very good learning experience as well. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, well. As far as next week goes, uh, Dorm is next week, and Juki, yes. I believe you're going to be down there. So yes, um, I will. So um, that's exciting. Yeah. If you're down there, go say hi to him and tell yeah, him how much. Uh, thank you for how much he's taught you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> just just there. go up to him. He's a he's a really cool guy. He'll he won't bite. He's he's yeah. super nice. Uh, it, it's sure to be a really good thing. I'm going to be watching. Uh, mm -hmm. Really excited. Praying my bracket holds up, but we'll see. Oh god, my bracket is already ruined. It dumpstered. It got yeah, dumpstered I, by all I, the after, early. Oh my yeah, in their in their early bracket when uh, when those oh, teams, so many those upsets. Collegiate, yep, the, so those many upsets, upsets happened. Those first few upsets happened. I just gave up. I'm like, yeah, that was, that was rough. <laughs> my bracket was ruined. That was super I was like, rough. Oh god. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a really good game. So be sure to tune in to that next Saturday. Uh, yep. If you're around and watch watch some dorm, but uh, we'll either postpone or I will grab another guest, and we will have a, a guest for the master's class next week. So uh, you can follow me on Twitter. Uh, I'll or I'll make sure I try and announce it on the podcast as well on Wednesday. And let you know what's going on with that. But uh, thank you, Juki. Uh, no thank you, everybody else, for coming out, and we will see you again soon. <laughs>